So if you're listening to these lectures in order, you might notice that I look like I'm in a different location and I'm wearing something different. My t-shirt, if you can't quite make it out, has um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Carl Sagan, and Bill Nye the Science Guy on it. So um, welcome to yet another segment in Chapter 1. In the, in the, we most recently in Chapter 1 talked about how the density of the air, um, the air gets thinner as you climb a mountain. The air gets thinner as you go up um, uh, vertically. And so um, now we're going to talk about layers of the Earth's atmosphere, kind of keeping that all of that in mind. And honestly, as you go up in the atmosphere, or excuse me, as you climb a mountain, you might tell me with regard to temperature, it gets colder. And you're right. When you climb a mountain, you are still within that actually layer of the Earth's atmosphere closest to the Earth's surface called the troposphere. And it does get colder as you go up in the troposphere. But notice that as you go up in the next layer, by the way, I guess I should say, this is a good slide, and it's got all four layers that we're going to talk about here um, listed. So I mentioned the troposphere, so that's what we are standing in. As we climb even the tallest mountain, we still are in the troposphere. Notice there's Mount Everest drawn to scale there. Above the troposphere is the stratosphere. And I'll talk about each one of these individually a little bit. And above the stratosphere is the mesosphere, and above the mesosphere is the thermosphere. I'm going to add an ionosphere coming in here in a little bit, and actually it's the upper part of the mesosphere and into the thermosphere. Ionosphere. Very good. So the troposphere, after we start, after we're done talking about kind of the Earth's atmosphere in in its entirety, most weather actually occurs in the troposphere. So we'll spend a lot of time in this course talking about the troposphere. Um, so the troposphere, um, actually. It, the troposphere is thickest near the poles, and it's sorry, it's thickest near the equator, and it's thinnest near the poles. And I have a, you have a homework question about that, and I've got a sl uh, slide to kind of show you about that. So the thickness of the troposphere varies. The, the troposphere is the thinnest of all four layers of the Earth's atmosphere. On top of the troposphere, as before you get to the stratosphere, something called the tropopause. Um, I mentioned that nearly all weather occurs within the troposphere. Um, with that said, do you remember when we talked about the ozone hole over the poles? We said that there were polar stratospheric clouds that are associated with um, this ozone hole. Um, and so those clouds occur in the stratosphere, which is the, there are some miscellaneous clouds that occur outside of the troposphere. Um, it's the thinnest of all layers, but remember we said that the air is most dense near the Earth's surface, so even though it's the thinnest, it contains most of the particles that are make up our Earth's atmosphere. Um, so as you climb a mountain, you know it gets colder. And um, I guess I would say the reason in general it gets colder from the Earth's surface up, within the troposphere anyway, is because um, the Earth's surface is a great little radiator. Um, when the Earth is exposed to the sun, the Earth's surface, and slightly below the surface, just soaks in all of that thermal radiation from the sun. And then during the daytime and during the nighttime, it kind of, what we say, re-radiates that thermal energy. So it's like a little radiator. So as you get farther from the surface of the Earth, you're getting farther from your little radiator. It's like having a, a little heater in your bathroom, and the farther you get away from it, it gets cooler. It's the same thing. Um, we'll talk more about temperature inversions, but in general we say a temperature inversion is in place as if you go up, instead of getting cooler, if it gets warmer as you go up. That's called a temperature inversion, and they are significant in kind of our weather patterns. So um, the environmental lapse rate then is basically what is happening in the troposphere temperature-wise as you ascend or rise vertically. That's called the environmental lapse rate. And in general, I want, I'll kind of show you what I mean. In general, the environmental lapse rate, it's just a kind of a very general number, is about 6.5 degrees Celsius 
for every one kilometer. So this is to say every one kilometer you rise, the temperature will have cooled 6.5 degrees Celsius. So let's say it starts at 10 degrees Celsius, the Earth's surface. You rise one kilometer vertically, that puts you at what? 3.5 degrees Celsius. Does that make sense? You rise a second kilometer, so now you're two kilometers above the Earth's surface. That would be, um, so you started at 10, that would be uh, minus three, minus three degrees Celsius. Does that make sense? Okay, but that's a very, very vague number, a very general number. And um, the, the true environmental lapse rate isn't always that. And so how do we find out how, what the temperature of the air is doing vertically? We send up weather balloons. And it's kind of cool because can you see here is a little gizmo attached to a weather balloon. And this weather balloon, I'm thinking they usually put helium in the weather balloon. And um, the, they go up twice a day um, throughout the, the United States and probably, I want to say worldwide too. Um, there, and so as this balloon, as this balloon ascends, what happens is it comes up against less and less pressure. And so what that means, and I'll kind of convince you of this later, but um, there was a certain amount of helium um, gas in there. And so with less and less pressure, it expands and expands and expands, okay, as it ascends. And I, I've seen a, I've heard tell that they can get, seen a video, I've heard tell that they can get about as big as a house, okay, and that latex will expand that far. But at some point, that yellow latex is going to snap, it's going to break. Okay, at that point, your, um, oh, by the way, hopefully, and that's the important part, as it ascends, um, that little box is going up and that little box is sending back information. It's sending back information about the environmental lapse rate, the temperature changes, cooling in the troposphere, and it's also sending back, depending upon what it is, good information about uh, pressure, barometric pressure as it ascends, um, wind speed, wind direction perhaps. Okay, it's all sending it to a computer. So it got as big as a house, it, it, the box gave all the information it's going to give, it bursts. I think this is neat, it's reusable. So I don't know if you can see kind of this little red thing right here, it's a parachute. And so it opens up and this then box falls down to the ground and you can go retrieve it. Now. Um, I, I would need to kind of look the, into this to confirm it, but I think they have um, GPS to help relocate those, those devices are reusable. The other thing is, you know, you need a parachute because you wouldn't want that to hit somebody on the head as it fell. Okay, so weather balloons twice a day and um, they give us uh, the uh, profile information as they ascend. Okay, now you figure they're not going to just go straight up, they're going to go up and then catch some winds and, and kind of go along with whatever winds that are, are governing them. Then. But So I mentioned that the height of the troposphere varies, and again it is a homework, a homework question, and it is thickest near the equator, okay, and thinnest near the poles, and I think this is a nice little thing up here. Okay, so here is the equator. And this is showing you kind of the thick troposphere up here. It's thinnest near the poles. Um, and the reason it's thickest near the equator has to do with, you know, if you're going to go for, if you're looking for someplace warm, you're going to go near the equator. Equators, and we'll talk more about that in chapter two. But by latitude, that's a nice, warm, toasty place to be. Actually, it might be chapter three. So it's, um, and then my only other point is this kind of shows you the, um, the, uh, this shows you the thickness of the troposphere at those different layers. So for instance, um, here we have um, near the equator, okay, this is how thick the troposphere is, and then here we have near the poles, this is how thick the troposphere is.